Just brought in the electric fence transformer last week. Hey everyone, it is October 20th. We're gonna see what's still in the garden. We got lucky this year. The frost hasn't killed anything yet. In the next couple days, there definitely won't be a frost. Next week, it looks like some deep freezes, but it also looked like that two weeks ago and the weather changed for the best. The hoses in here have been winterized. I blasted them out with the air compressor. The marigolds all look really nice. I should probably collect some of the dead flowers. You can just put them in a paper bag so they can breathe and dry out. A plastic bag, they'll rot. See all the tomatoes, how they're all dead? That was not a frost. They just died maybe from the cold weather. Oh, there's a bunch of moths in here. I wonder what type they are. Now, all these green tomatoes can still be saved in here. I brought a giant tomato plant in the house if you saw that video. Fruit flies galore. I put fly paper up. They weren't seemingly attracted to it. They're not attracted to bug zappers, but I use the same chemical we use in the garden. It's called seven in the red container. Oh my gosh, the swarm of fruit flies. Oh my gosh, it's bad. The swarm of fruit flies in here from the rotten tomatoes. Oh, we need a, fr we need a frost. Oh, we need a frost to kill these guys off. They're attracted to my light. Why aren't they attracted to the bug zapper light in the house? Can you see how many are swarming around? Wow, they're going in my eyes and everything. They're horrible creatures. Wow, we got a gigantic zucchini and a baby zucchini. The baby one will taste better. They got more flavor. All right, the fruit flies aren't as bad over here. It's only when we're next to the tomato plant. I'm hoping to get some broccoli out of here today. That's what I'm hoping to get. Now, broccoli is tolerant to frost, so that's good. And if you don't pick it in time, this right here would have been the part you ate, the broccoli head. But nope, it bloomed into a big flower, and hummingbirds love them. Look at that perfect piece of broccoli. We're going to eat this tonight. Now, broccoli, you can eat the leaves too. Might be good. And the stem here, I think you can eat that too. We can try eating some stem. Maybe if the stem's good, I'll come out and pick a bunch more. But this right here, that's what happens to this broccoli head. That's flowers. This was a broccoli head way down here. And it turned into all this if it doesn't get picked. Looking around for more good broccoli heads. We might be able to eat. That one's a little bit too far along. Um, I also want to... Pick a few of the corns off of here. They're actually full-size corn now. I actually, I like the baby corns better. Now everyone, outside the main garden, we had some other plants here which just got destroyed by slugs earlier in the year. Slugs haven't been a problem for the past month or so. But I didn't think we'd get anything. Look, we actually got a little squash. I think that'll be good in a frying pan with the zucchini. Look, there's another squash I can eat maybe later in the week. Those other ones, who knows if they'll get the chance to live or not through the frosts. Could always try throwing a blanket over it at night. And here was a cucumber plant, which is completely gone. This right here is asparagus. Asparagus can survive certain winters. Oh, there's a slug just talking about them. Slugs, uh, asparagus can survive some winters if it's not that harsh. In my climate, it's unlikely to survive like this year one. I'm not bringing it in the house, though. I brought another one in the house, a smaller one. We'll see if we can get it to survive the winter. It's supposedly going to turn yellow and look like it's dead in the house, but in the spring it should come right back up. So uh, year three is usually when it can survive the winter. I don't know about my climate, but we'll find out eventually. It's getting windy. Hear those trees creaking? Back in the house, here's some green tomatoes. Just leaving them out on your counter, or if you expose them to sunlight like in a windowsill, they'll turn faster. They'll all eventually turn bright orange, ready to eat. Now I gotta go ahead and wash all this stuff off. I have to peel the baby corns. I didn't grab any bigger corn. I actually like the baby corn better. The broccoli, we didn't get much of it today. But I'm curious, if this stem by itself tastes good, I'll go cut it all down and do that. Oh, we brought one of those guys in. Fruit fly. I inhaled so many of them by accident. This is huge. It'll probably have a bland taste, but that's why we will season it a good amount. 
Yeah, those fruit flies, that was horrible out there because there's hundreds of rotten tomatoes. Grew too many, couldn't even give them away. So um, next year I'm going to grow like half of them because that was too many. You can't even walk between the aisles. That's one of the reasons why we couldn't get too many of them. Tonight I want to try with the broccoli. I don't have much to actually steam. I'm going to steam the corn today. Usually I put it in the frying pan and crisp it up with a little bit of burnt and it's good. Sometimes I wrap it up and put it on the grill with some butter and pepper in there with it. And that's also really good. But I'm going to try steaming it today. I haven't done that in a, ever, actually. Most people steam their broccoli and baby corn. I haven't been doing that. We'll see if it's good. So I put some water in the bottom of the pan. I've got two layers here. can even order more layers if I wanted to. And then we put the cover on. We can steam a bunch of vegetables in there. I wonder how this thing will do. When I was assembling it, the top felt really cheap. It's very thin metal. This whole thing here was $8 on line. I wonder how this really cheap device will do. And we also got some bacon we're going to cook. I love maple bacon. That's my favorite type. All right, everything's washed and cut up. Maybe I'll make that one tomorrow. That'll be a little bland, but we just got to use a lot of seasoning. It feels actually hollow, maybe. So I got these cut up. The pan is coated with a good amount of olive oil and it has oregano and pepper on it. The corn, this is a, the smallest baby corn I've picked out of my stuff all year. Most of my stuff are like these. See, they're pretty perfect. And look at this one, it's really fat and then really tiny at the top. Did the corn realize it wasn't gonna have enough growing season? And it just prioritized making seeds in the bottom? I don't know. I took the top of this off because we don't need both layers now, if just the trunk of the broccoli is good, I'll go and I'll cut. We have so much of that. If it tastes good, I'll go steam a ton of that if it ends up being good. But this will be good. This is just my dinner. I won't be able to finish anymore if I make more. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start at a medium on this. Put the bacon on everything on medium for now and we'll see how it does. And this stuff here, I go throw that back outside. If there's deer or anything around, maybe they'll eat that. Right here is the giant tomato plant that I brought into the house. It's got a lot of green ones. It's got a lot of flowers still on it. Up there on the wall is a grow lamp. It's on 12 hours a day, same hours as the sun. I put fly paper in here, multiple fly papers hanging around. Also got that thing there for fruit flies. It's a big sticky blob that looks like an orange. It only caught a few, but they were pretty bad in here. See, there's a lot of rotten fruit, too, that the thing dropped. Last night, I spent like an hour in here picking every single ripe one off. Now there's just green ones, and I'll keep up with it with eating them. I wasn't keeping up with it because all that occurred when it was outside. And put this on the plant. Every fruit fly was gone. Now there's barely any in the house. This stuff worked awesome. It's made for vegetable plants. You just have to wash your food before you eat it. Which you should anyways. Alright, about 10 minutes later everything's nice and crispy like I like it. That adds a lot of flavor I think. This is all nice and not too soft, but good. And that's all cooked. Time to eat once it cools down. This time of year, whenever I make bacon, the grease right here, I'll, once it solidifies, I'll scrape it up and leave it outside on a plate. The animals are trying to fatten up and the raccoons love that to get fat for the winter. And over here, must have been with the corn. Look at that, we accidentally fried some worm or uh, or steamed a worm in there. Oh well, everything's cooked and it looks really delicious. And I hope today's video was interesting everybody. Thanks for watching and have a great day. I'm being very cautious because I don't know where that worm came from. That worm actually looks like a piece of corn. It's not though. Just look, inspecting everything that was in there. Maybe he was in, yeah, he was where the broccoli was. So it was probably a little worm hanging out in the broccoli head. 
how does the centerpiece taste like this the trunk of it mmm tastes the same I'm gonna go cut down all the trunks off those plants and eat them all eat this thing that's really good being steamed here's a piece of zucchini squash good it may look burnt to you guys but I wish I actually crisp it a little more it's not that crispy next time I'll have to cook it a little bit longer I love the baby corns see now actually that one's a little tough but these they're soft enough you can eat the entire thing I just ate that entire big head of broccoli, and I'm a little nervous now. Maybe I ate somebody, because look at this. We found another one. Oh no. Gotta be very careful, I guess, taking broccoli now. There's little tiny creatures on them. Well, I guess I gotta do a better job than just rinsing off. I guess I gotta run my fingers through the heads of broccoli. Make sure there's nothing in there like that.